الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد يا عباد الله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك يدبروا آياته Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says in his noble book The book in which we have sent it down The blessed book In which we have sent it down unto you لِيَدَبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ So that its verses They may be pondered over So that one may reflect Upon the verses of Allah Jalla wa'ala وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَا أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ And so that the men of understanding, those who have understandings and sound intellects, they may remember. We reach the, the fourth ayah in Surah al sajda Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Allahu alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal-arba wa ma baynahuma fi sittati ayyam. ثم استوى على العرش ما لكم من دونه من ولي ولا شفيع أفلا تتذكرون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says what translated means And Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth and that which is between them in six days And then he rolls above the throne ما لكم من دونه You do not have besides him any wali, any guardian, helper or protector. ولا شفيع No one who will make shafi'a for you and give unto you intercession. So will you not then remember? Ya ibad, there are some tremendous benefits inside of these ayat. Tremendous lessons that are inside of these verses. It is incumbent that we ponder upon the Quran. The Fadilat al Shaykh al Imam, Imam Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentions. He says, وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا And Allah Ta'ala's statement in that which is between them. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us, Allah that Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth. And that which is between them, meaning, يعني, and that which is between the heavens and the earth, and it is the, the clouds. And also, that will encompass the stars, the moon, and other than that, from that which is similar to it. And this is the takeaway from here. This is the takeaway. The Shaykh he says that this points to the fact that there are many things. There are many things that are between the heavens and the earth. That perhaps we don't even know about it in Al An. Until now, we have no knowledge of it. We don't even know about it. There are things that are between the heavens and the earth in which we have no knowledge of. For in Al An, نكتشف الأشياء كثيرة. Because up until now, many things are being discovered. Many things are being discovered unto us. مما بين السماء والأرض. From those things that are between the heavens and between the earth. ويدل على أن ما بين السماء والأرض أنه ليس مجرد السهاب فقط بل وراء ذلك and that 
that which is intended by that which is between the heavens and that which is between the earth, that it is not restricted to just the clouds alone, but there are other things. There are other things that are beyond that. There's many benefits. And these ayat, they show us that we have to return back to the ulama. We have to return back to the salaf. We have to return back to the sahaba so that we may get a better understanding of the Qur'an. We have to return back to the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so we can understand better the Qur'an because a sunnah here to fassil al-Qur'an because the sunnah it gives explanation to the Qur'an wa qawluhu ta'ala in Allah ta'ala statement fi sittati ayyam inside of six days this is something that may pass upon our tongue something that has passed by our ears many times but have we really given to it thought have we given to it contemplation because there's a lot behind this understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating the heavens and the earth inside of six days. Qala Imam Uthaymeen rahimahullahu ta'ala that that which is meant by these six days wa qad fassal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hadihi al-arba' fi surah fussilat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has explained and given detail to these four, to four from these six days inside of Fussilat, in Surah Fussilat. Also, in the other two remaining days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained them inside of Surah Al Fussilat in detail and what took place, what had taken place in which days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Qul, a'innakum la takfuruna. بِالَّذِي خَلَقُ الْأَرُضِ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ Allah Ta'ala, He says, and say to them, will you disbelieve in the one who, and are you, you polytheists, you kuffar, do you disbelieve in the one who created the earth inside of two days? وَتَجْعَلُونَ لَهُ أَنْدَادًا And you set up and you make for him rivals, rivals in which you give aspects of worship and devotion unto, ذَٰلِكَ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ The one who created the earth in two days and this is the Lord of all that exists. This is the Lord of all that exists. And then in the next ayah, قال الله سبحانه وتعالى وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَ مِنْ فَوْقِهَا وَبَارَكَ فِيهَا وَقَدَّرَ فِيهَا أَقْوَاتَهَا فِي أَرْبَعَةِ أَيَّامِ سَوَاءً للسائلين. Allah Ta'ala, the next ayah, He says, and we had made on the earth, and we put and placed upon the earth, firm, strong mountains on top of it. And we had blessed it, put the blessings therein. And we have measured out therein the provisions. And this was done inside of four days, meaning that which had taken place from the creation of the earth, inside of four days, inside of four days that were equal in limit, that were equal in time, equal in scope, for those who ask, for those who ask questions. Meaning that only those who ask the questions that the early man they explain, that those who ask the questions, they are the ones who will really benefit from the likes of this. That those who are inquisitive and they ask, those are the ones who are really going to benefit from the likes of this. Because look in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ And then, He rose, or then, He made the istawa to the sama, and we'll come to explain what is the meaning of this. عَلَى كُلِّ حال. And then the attention was placed on the, on the skies. وَهِيَ دُخَانُ And at that time, the heavens, the heavens, it was, it was smoke at that time. فَقَالَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرُضَ and then Allah Ta'ala, He said to the heavens and He said to the earth, Come unto us willingly or unwillingly. So they both said, we verily we both come submitting ourselves. We both come willingly. And then he made it into seven heavens inside of two days. Seven heavens inside of two days. 
for the one who contemplates upon these ayat, they will come to his mind question. And this is why they will benefit those who ask the question. Because in the first ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that He created the earth for your main inside of two days. But in the next ayah, it is mentioned that the mountains and the blessings and the provisions they were placed inside of the earth inside of four days. If a person looks at these ayat and doesn't understand exactly what is going on, he may add the two to the four and say, well, that's six right there. But then in the ayah after that, or two ayahs later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions that the creation of the heavens into seven heavens, then this took place inside of two days. Inside of two days. So when you add all of that together, you have two, then you have four, then you have two, which is eight. This is why it is important, ya ibad, that we have to return back to the sunnah of Mustafa. We have to return back to the ulama. It is not enough. And this is an indication that it is not enough to rely on the knowledge of the Arabic language alone to understand the Qur'an. But you have to return back to the tafsir from the Prophet wasallam. We have to return back to the tafsir of the Sahaba so that we can understand what is intended here inside of these ayat. What is intended here inside of these ayat? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's give us a better understanding and broaden our understanding on what the meaning of these ayat they are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He tells us elsewhere in the Quran. أَأَنْتُمْ أَشَدُّ خَلْقًا أَمِ السَّمَاءَ بَنَاهَا Are you a stronger creation or the heavens that we have constructed? And this shows the human beings the weakness of their creation. It shows the human beings that there is no justification for them being arrogant. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He asks them, Are you a stronger creation or the heavens that we have constructed? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Samkaha fasawaha, those heavens, uh, rafa'a, rafa'a samkaha fasawaha, those heavens that we have raised and up high, and He have given them their height. Wa akhtasha. And that we have spread out, spread out what? Laylaha wa akhraja duhaha. And we have spread out its night. Its night, it covers, it envelops. And we have brought forth its light. And we have brought forth its light. Wal arda ba'da dhalika dahaha. And then the earth after that. So here in these ayat, it is mentioned the creation of the heavens first. And then the creation of the earth after that. Whereas in the other ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the creation of the earth first and then the creation of the heavens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say as relates to the earth and that after that, then the earth we spread it out. وَأَخْرَجَ مِنْهَا مَاءَهَا وَمَرْعَاهَا And we had brought forward from the earth its water and its pastures. وَالْجِبَالَ أَرْسَاهَا and we had set its mountains firm and strong inside of the earth. So how do we understand all of these ayat together so that we have a clear picture on how the earth it was created inside of six days and the heavens, how the earth and the heavens were created inside of six days. The earth four of those days, the heavens two of those days. So how do we understand this? وَذَكْرَ الْحَافِظْ مِنْ كَثِيرٍ Imam Al-Kathir, he mentions the statement, the narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma where he explains this where he says خَلَقُ الْأَرْضُ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ that Allah created the heaven, uh, the earth that Allah created the earth in two days in two days ثُمَّ خَلَقَ السَّمَاءِ and then after these uh, first two days Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens. Thumma And then He created the heavens in two more other days. Thumma stawa ila fasawahun fi yawmayn al-akhrayn. 
And then Allah Ta'ala, He created the heavens and the height and the loftiness thereof inside of two other days. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala returned back to the creation of the earth. And he, and he spread it out. So right now we have two days that the earth was initially created. And then two days that the heavens were created. That's four days. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned back to the earth. And he spread it out. And what is meant and intended by spreading out the earth is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains. أَخْرَجَ مِنْهَا وَمَرْعَى That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he brought forward from the earth. In these next two days, the water, the pastures. وَخَلَقَ الْجِبَالِ والآكام. And Allah Ta'ala, He created the hills and He created the, the mountains and created the hills. And that which is between it. Inside of two other days. Inside of two other days. So therefore, we have two days that earth was initially created. Then two days, the heavens, all seven of them were created. And then Allah Ta'ala came back to the creation of the earth, making therein. The waters making therein, the mountains and the hills and so on and so forth, and two other days. So, when we add all of these together, then we have what? Then we have four days for the earth, two days for the heavens. This is why here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He starts with the earth for the two days. And why in Surah Nazi'at, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions the heavens before the earth. Because when we ponder on Surah Al Nazi'at, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the creation of the heavens inside of the two days, and then Allah ta'ala, He mentions the what? Then the earth was spread out. Then the water, it came forward, the light, the, uh, the darkness of the night, uh, excuse me, then the water came forward, the pasture, so on and so forth. Naam? Showing us the order that after the, 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 the skies and the heavens they were created, then more attention was given back to the earth for the provisions to be spread out and so on and so forth. And in that, Ya Ibad, there is a tremendous lesson to benefit and to contemplate upon how much effort, how much goodness, how much kindness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has showed to the human beings. In that, after the initial creation of the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went back to the earth two more days to put therein the mountains, the hills, the pastures, to put therein the waters and all of those things of provision that are contained inside of the earth. But with that, the human beings still have the audacity to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahul Musta'an. Contemplate upon that, ya ibad, and meet that with appreciation. Meet that with showing thanks unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his many blessings. Hada, aqulu quli hada, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد يا عباد الله after having informed us of the creation of the heavens and the earth inside of six days four days upon the earth two days upon the heavens Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says ثم استوى على العرش and then he made the istawa upon the arsh or more correctly over the arsh وقوله subhanahu wa ta'ala ثم استوى على العرش استوى بمعنى على and then Allah Ta'ala statement and then he rose above the throne. Istawa here it means above. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above the throne. Ya ibadullah, it is incumbent that we understand well the Quran and that we give our time to knowledge so that we understand correctly. Because there are many individuals who have a corrupt aqidah. Many individuals who have a corrupt creed and belief. And these are those who believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kulli makan, that Allah is everywhere. This is incorrect. This is wrong. 
This is in essence the most despicable or from the most despicable statements that an individual could ever make. This type of disbelief, it supersedes and goes beyond the disbelief of the Jews and the Christians. Because the Christians, they place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of one thing from the creation and to place Allah in anything from the creation is kufr. It's incorrect. But they say that Allah is inside of the Messiah. A'udhu billah. Then you have from the Hindus who say that Allah manifests in, in all of their gods in which they have had, or they have. وَعِيَاذُ billah. But these other individuals, they go even beyond that when they say that Allah is everywhere. By saying that Allah is inside of everything and everywhere. And everywhere means everywhere. So that includes what? The bathroom, that includes the pig, that includes the toilet, that includes, that includes, that includes, that includes the garbage. This is kufr. This is kufr and it's contrary to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us inside the Qur'an. Allah ta'ala right here in this ayah says, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ And then He rose above the throne showing us that Allah huwa al-a'la That Allah is the most high. سَبِّحْ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى Allah is the most high. He's not physically in every place. Allah tells us where He is at. Ar-Rahman عَلَى الْعَرْشِ اسْتَوَى as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Taha, that the most beneficent, He is above the throne. Above the throne. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never in the Quran tells us that Allah is in every place. Never. But Allah Himself is above His throne as He tells us. Outside of His creation. Not a part of His creation. However, His hearing, His seeing, His knowledge, you can't hide from that. Nowhere is devoid from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter where you are, He sees what you're doing. Here's what you're saying, knows what you're doing, so on and so forth. But Allah Himself, He is above His throne as He has taught us. So we need to understand the Qur'an and how words are used inside of the Qur'an. Imam Uthaymeen, he mentions that there are four ways in which the word istawa comes inside of the Qur'an, bearing different meanings depending on the context in which it is in. To make a long story short, whenever, as the Imam he mentions, whenever you bring the word istawa in its muqayyida bi'ala, that you bring istawa and is connected to ala, harfun jar ala, then the meaning of it is al-ulu. The meaning of it is al-ulu. To be high, to be high. To be the most high. So here in this ayah we have al istawa ma'a ala. Thumma istawa ala. Ala al arsh. So this means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above. Above his throne. He's above his throne. And just because it came inside of the ayah in Surah Fusilat, we would like to mention another of these four, and that is. When you have an istawa muqayyida bi ila, another harfun jar, ila, then this means, in this case, al qasd al tam, it means that the pure attention, the complete attention, al qasd, the complete atten in intention, naam, was given. And this is how we have in the ayah, as it comes in surah, in surah, Fusilat. As Allah Ta'ala says, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ And then, the intention, it was turned to what? To the, to the heavens. To the heavens. Naam? To the heavens. Two days, the earth that was being created. Naam? In two days. And then, the attention was given to the heavens. And they were created, all seven of them, inside of two days. And then Allah Ta'ala, He spread out the earth. He put the mountains, the hills, the provisions, the, the blessings, so on and so forth, inside of the earth in two more days. Naam. So this is what we benefit from the likes of this. Naam. Ala kulli hal. The aqeedah. Then Allah Ta'ala is above His throne. This is the aqeedah Islamiyah. Because this is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He teaches us inside of the Quran. So any type of mention of Allah being inside of every place, 
This is not an aqidah that was taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is not an aqidah that was believed by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the question becomes, where they get that from? They got that from the kuffar. The Hindu believe what they believe because they believe that Allah has come inside of his creation, inside of these things that have manifest. The Christians believe what they believe because they believe that Allah has come inside of his creation. Even the five percenters and the Ansar cult and so on and so forth believe what they believe because they believe that Allah is in every place. He's omnipresent. And they say since Allah is omnipresent, and this is the extent and the full extent of this type of heresy, as you find some of the Qulat from the Sufiya, those who are upon the bid'ah, mukaffira, the type of bid'ah that takes you outside of Islam, this is the conclusion which they have come to as well. And that is, if Allah is everywhere and in every place, then that means that Allah is inside of me. And if Allah is inside of me, then that means that I myself am divine, so why pray to anybody outside myself? This is where the Ansar cult they went to, their kuffar. This is where those individuals in the Sufiya went to, and why they are kuffar. Those who will open up their cloak and say, there's nothing inside my cloak except, except for Allah. He is Allah and I am He. وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ So we have to understand the full scope of the khutf, of the repugnant nature of this type of belief by saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere. Because one is not correct. That's not what Allah tells in the Quran. Two, the implications of that are despicable. Because now you are attributing unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lowly places. Because when you say, what about the garbage? What about the toilet? Oh, no, no, not there. Okay, but you said everywhere. Does not everywhere mean everywhere? Kulli makan does not mean kulli kul. Yeah. So it doesn't match up textually. It doesn't match up in reality. It doesn't match up intellectually. So it's incumbent that we take our belief from the Qur'an. We take our belief from where? From the Prophet sallallahu We take our belief from the book, from the sunnah. That which the salaf they were upon. This is one of the biggest takeaways that we hear from this ayah. So how is it and how unfortunate is it that individuals, they would memorize the likes of these ayat but still hold a despicable belief. وَعِيَابُ billah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He concludes these ayat by telling us that He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, well that those people who choose to disbelieve in Allah, those who disbelieve in Allah, مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا شَفِيعٍ That you will have those who are being addressed, those kuffar, those kuffar from the Quraysh, any kuffar who come after that who are being addressed. You will have no helper, no guardian, no protector, and no, shaf no shafi'ir. You will have no shafi'ir. Meaning there will be no one yushfi'ir lak. There will be no one who will give intercession unto you. Because intercession is only by, intercession is only by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for the likes of the kuffar, the mushrikun, Allah ta'ala, He does not allow that no one make intercession upon their behalf. No one. It's important to understand that. If you want intercession, then from that which will make you eligible for intercession, that which will make you eligible for shafa'a, is that you have to be from the muwahideen. You have to be of those who implement the tawheed. For the people of shirk, the people that associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is forbidden for them that anyone will intercede on their behalf. So now reflect upon this as well. Those from the Sufiya who will tell you to pray to the awliya, to make intercession, to pray to the awliya, so they can make intercession for you. Connect yourself to Ali so and so, so he can make intercession for you. This is the exact same creed of the polytheists. This is what they say. That we only draw near unto them so that they may make shafa'a for us. وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ Understand, ya ibad, this one ayah destroys, destroys the aqidah, it destroys the falsehood that the Sufiya are upon and everyone who is similar unto them. It destroys those who believe that Allah is everywhere and every place. It destroys those who believe that you can seek nearness to Allah through righteous man so-and-so, by praying to righteous man so-and-so, by asking righteous man so-and-so to do something for you dead or alive. This is real. When you look throughout of the places inside of the lands of the Muslims, you find many masajid and they have graves therein. Inside the masjid is a grave. Look inside of Egypt, for example, many masajid have graves in them. One brother in Gambia, he said, Subhanallah, 
you won't find a single masjid in my village except that it has a grave inside of it. Every single one. I said, Ya Subhanallah, so what do you do? He said, we have to pray congregation other way, other places. We can't pray in there. Why? Why has this pandemic struck the Muslims? Because of a misunderstanding. Because of a misunderstanding of the likes of what is mentioned here in this one verse. And that is people believing that they can draw near unto Allah by way of righteous individuals. Believing that these individuals will intercede on their behalf with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know this is what some of the Christians say? Why they pray to Jesus? They pray to Jesus so that Jesus may take their uh, re request unto Allah. Because Allah is too pure to go straight to Him. So they have to go through Jesus. This is what some, uh, many of the Christians believe. This is from the Christian belief. So how is that different from those who say we have to go through, say, Bedouin? Or Abdul Qadir Jalani? Or, 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 or to the end of it, from the awliya. Some of them real, some of them fake. We have to understand our creed so that we don't fall into the likes of these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that when we ask to ask Him, the Prophet sallallahu He taught Abdullah ibn Abbas, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ When you ask, ask Allah. When you seek help, seek the help from Allah. This is the aqeedah Islamiyyah. It is important that this is trust, so that when it comes to us other than that, we're able to identify it and know who what it really is. No matter if it's called Christianity, no matter if it's called Buddhism, no matter if it's called the Five Sin Nation, no matter if it's called a nation of Farrakh Khan in them, or whoever, or Sufiya. We understand exactly what it is when we hear it, so that we're able to identify it and run away from it and stick to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us in this one ayah. This one ayah. How many of the villages will be rectified? How many of the masajid will be emptied and cleaned out from the graves? If the Muslims understood good, this one verse. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us of those. يَسْتَبِعُونَ قَوْلًا فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنًا وَنْيَجْعَلَنَ مِنْ مُبَارَكًا حَيْثُ مَا كُنَّا وَنْيَجْعَلَنَ مِنْ مَنْ إِذَا أُعْتِيَ شَكَرْ وَذُبُتُ لِيَ صَبَرْ وَإِذَا أَذْنَبَ اسْتَغْفَرَ فَإِنَّ هَا أُولَئِ ثَلَاثَ عُنْوَانُ سَعَادَةً هَذَا فَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ